A lot of times when people ask me what Heifer the National is all about, I ask them if they've read a book called Beatrice's Goat because it does a really great job of encapsulating everything that Heifer does and what it's all about. So today I'm going to read you all this book. Do you want to read this book? Mm -hmm. If you were to visit the small African village of Kisinga in the rolling hills of western Uganda, and if you were to take a left at the crossroads and follow a narrow dirt path between two tall banana groves, you would come to the home of a girl named Beatrice. Beatrice lives there with her mother and five younger brothers and sisters in a sturdy mud house with a fine steel roof. The house is new, and so is the shiny blue wooden furniture inside. In fact, many things are new to Beatrice and to her family lately. And it's all because of a goat named Mugisa. Beatrice loves everything about Mugisa. The feel of her coarse brown and white coat, the way her chin hairs curl just so, and how Mugisa gently teases her by butting her knobby horns against Beatrice's hand, tup, tup, like a drumbeat waiting for a song. But there is one reason why Beatrice loves Mugisa most of all. In the time before Mugisa, Beatrice spent her days helping her mama hoe and plant in the fields and tend the... Chicken. Chickens! She watched the younger children and she helped to grind the cassava flour that they would take to market to sell. Once in a while, when she was tending baby Pascavia, Beatrice would stop by the schoolhouse. Often, the students had carried their long wooden benches outside to work under the cool shade of the jackfruit trees. Then Beatrice would stand quietly off to one side, pretending she was a student too. Oh, how she wanted to be a schoolgirl. How she yearned to sit on one of the benches and figure sums on a small slate chalkboard. How she wished to turn the pages of a worn copy book and study each word over and over until it stuck in her mind like a burr. I'll never be able to go to school, she would sigh. How could I ever save enough money to pay for books or a uniform? One day, while Beatrice was busy pulling weeds, Mama came to her with dancing eyes. Beatrice, some kind-hearted people from far away have given us a lucky gift. We are one of 12 village families to receive a goat. Beatrice was puzzled. A goat? What kind of gift was a goat? It couldn't get up each morning and start their charcoal fire for cooking. It couldn't hike down to the stream each week and scrub their dirty clothes clean. It couldn't keep an eye on Grace, Moses, Harriet, Josa, and Pascavia. Her long fingers tugged at the weeds. That's very nice, Mama, she said politely. Then Mama added, it will be your job to take care of our goat. If you do, it can bring us wonderful things. Beatrice looked up at her mother. Will this goat come soon, she asked, because I would like to meet such a goat. Mama laughed. Good things take time. First I must plant pastures and build our goat a new shed. Beatrice nodded slowly. Surely Mama knew what she was doing. I will help you, she declared. For the next few months, Beatrice worked harder than ever before. She helped Mama collect the post for the shed walls, then lashed the posts together with banana fibers. She planted narrow bands of stiff elephant grass along the edges of their cassava field. She put in pigeon trees and lab lab vines between the banana trees. Finally, one day Beatrice's goat arrived, fat and sleek and ripe as a mango. Beatrice stood shyly with her brothers and sisters, then stepped forward and circled the goat once. She knelt close, inspecting its round belly and ran her hand along its smooth back. Mama says you are our lucky gift, she whispered. So that is what I will name you, Mugisa, luck. Two weeks later, Mugisa gave birth. It was Beatrice who discovered first one kid and then to her surprise, another. Twins, she exclaimed, stooping down to examine this. See that, my Mugisa? You have already brought us two wonderful things. Beatrice named the first kid Mulindwa, which means expected, and the second Kiembo, or surprise. Each day, Beatrice made sure Mugisa got extra elephant grass and water to help her produce lots of milk, 
even though it meant another long trip down to the stream and back. When the kids no longer needed it, Beatrice took her own first taste of Mugisa's milk. Mmm, sweet, she said, mixing the rest into her cup of breakfast porridge. Beatrice knew Mugisa's milk would keep them all much healthier. And who's that? That's Mugisa. That is Mugisa. Now, each morning after breakfast, Beatrice would head off to the shed to sell whatever milk was left over. Open for business, she would say in case anyone was listening. Often she would spy her friend, Bunane, coming through the banana groves. Good morning, Beatrice, Mugisa, expected and surprised, Bunane would always say. And then she would hand Beatrice a tall pail that Beatrice would fill to the top with Mugisa's milk. When Beatrice finished pouring, Bunane would hand her a shiny coin and Beatrice would carefully tuck the money into the small woven purse at her side. Day after day, week after week, Beatrice watched the purse get fuller. Soon there would be enough money for a new shirt for Moses and a warm blanket for the bed she shared with Grace. One day, Beatrice returned from collecting water and noticed Mama frowning and counting the money in her woven purse. Beatrice put down the water can and rushed to her mother's side. Mama, what is it? She asked. What's wrong? As she looked up, Mama's frown turned into a small smile. I think, she said, you may just have saved enough money to pay for school. School? Beatrice gasped. But what about all the other things we need? First things first, Mama said. Beatrice threw her arms around her mother's neck. Oh, Mama, thank you, she said. Then she ran to where her goat stood chewing her cud and hugged her tight. Oh, Mugisa, she whispered, today I am the lucky one. You have given me the gift I wanted most. The very next week, Beatrice started school. On the first morning that she was to attend, she sat proudly waiting for milk customers in her new yellow blouse and blue jumper, Mugisa by her side. Beatrice felt nervous and excited at the same time. Mugisa pressed close, letting her coarse coat brush softly against Beatrice's cheek. Oh, Mugisa, Beatrice cried, I'll miss you today. Then she thought again about all the good things Mugisa was bringing. Mama said that soon surprise would be sold for a lot of money. It will be enough to tear down this old house, she had explained. We will be able to put up a new one with a steel roof that won't leak during the rains. Beatrice heard a rustle and noticed Bunane heading toward her with an empty milk pail. He eyed her new uniform and said, Oh, you're so lucky. I wish I could go to school. Beatrice reached out and touched Bunane's arm. I've heard that your family is next in line to receive a goat. A smile crossed Bunane's face. Really? Really, she said. Then Beatrice kissed Musaka on the soft part of her nose, close to where her chin hairs curled just so, and she started off to school. This is what Heifer International is all about. Helping kids have better lives all over the world. There they are. There they are. Look at them. Who's that? That's Mugisa. That's Mugisa. And who is that? 